coming up. There are more lives lost worldwide to abortion than all other causes of death combined. Why we fight. It reminds people of the barbarity of abortion. Inside the battle to end abortion. A lot of progress has been made so far. Pro-lifers are rallying for the cause. There's value in seeing those around you who are questioning the morality of abortion. And saving lives along the way. And even if I hadn't known, their prayers were answered. Well, welcome to the 700 Club, jump-starting the battle against COVID-19. President Biden has brought out the big guns in the fight against the virus, including the promise of 100 million vaccinations in his first 100 days. The big question, is that enough? Plus, scientists now face another concern about the coronavirus. What is it, and why may it be even harder to stop? Heather Sells explains. President Biden says that America's vaccine rollout has been a dismal failure so far and blames the Trump administration for not acting with more urgency and coordination. We didn't get into this mess overnight. It's going to take months for us to turn things around. But let me be equally clear. We will get through this. We will defeat this pandemic. The CDC says that just 2.4 million have received the needed two doses of the vaccine with hundreds of millions necessary to end the outbreak. On Thursday, Biden signed 10 executive orders to do just that. One expands vaccine production. Others mandate masks for travel, lay the groundwork for reopening schools and businesses, and order FEMA to set up vaccination centers. Next month, the CDC will make vaccines available in pharmacies. Biden is promising 100 million vaccinations in his first 100 days. It sounds good, but it's actually just a 10 percent increase over the current daily pace already set under the Trump administration program. An AP reporter asked Biden if his target should be more ambitious, a point pushed by some public health experts. Is that high enough? Or higher than basically where the U.S. is right now? When I announced it, you all said it's not possible. Come on, give me a break, man. That's a good start. 100 million. Thank you. The president dismissing the question before leaving the room. Meanwhile, Biden's chief medical advisor, Dr. Anthony Fauci, says the coveted herd immunity, where a large percent of the population is naturally immune to the virus, could be achieved later this year. If we get the majority of Americans, 70 to 85 percent vaccinated by then, we could have a degree of herd immunity that would get us back to normal. The best case scenario for me is that we'd get 85 percent of the people vaccinated by the end of the summer. The other big concern, new mutations of the virus in the United Kingdom and South Africa. And scientists wonder if one in California is behind the surge in cases in Los Angeles and if some of those mutations could weaken the effectiveness of the vaccines. Work needs to be done in the laboratory to confirm whether or not the vaccine is going to be protective. One study says the South Africa variant could pose a problem for the vaccines. But Fauci and other experts believe the mutations won't significantly decrease the vaccine's effectiveness, although more research is still needed. But since the mutations are more contagious, they could lead to a faster spread of the virus, meaning more cases and deaths. And that increases the urgency to get as many people vaccinated as soon as possible. Heather Sell, CBN News. Well, we need to start thinking in terms of 600 million doses, not 100 million doses. 100 million would be a good start, but it's not sufficient. The bad news is the virus is mutating. And how quickly is it mutating? Uh, we don't know. What will the mutation do to the effectiveness of the vaccine? We don't know. Uh, all of these things are speculation. Uh, but the cold hard facts are we're, we're not going to get back to any kind of, quote, normal, close quote, until the fall, which is a real stunning fact. Uh, it's, this is going to be a long slog, and we have to be prepared for it. I know people want to br blame the previous administration for the lack of a rollout plan, uh, but let's give them credit for fast-tracking the virus 
uh, the vaccination process. So now that we have multiple choices, we may is pretty soon have four choices for vac vaccination. Uh, all of that is in record time. It's within nine months. Uh, so now let's do whatever is necessary to ramp up production so that we can get it into the arms of people that need protection. In other news, the Senate could move ahead with an impeachment trial for former President Trump next month. Ephraim Graham has that story from the CBN Newsroom. Ephraim? Gordon, Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell wants to push the start of the trial into February to give former President Trump time to prepare. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer will discuss the plan with McConnell. Many on Capitol Hill and some legal scholars question impeaching the former president since he's no longer in the White House. But House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says Trump doesn't deserve a get-out-of-jail card just because he's left office. And President Biden and others are calling for national unity. Trump has hired an attorney to represent him. Trust in the major news media has hit an all-time low. That is according to a survey from Edelman reported by Axios. 56% of Americans agree with the statement journalists and reporters are purposely trying to mislead people by saying things they know are false or gross exaggerations. And 58% are say agree that most news organizations are more concerned with supporting an ide ideology or political position than with for informing the public. A lack of trust in the media is also found around the world, not just in the United States. President Biden has signed an executive order intended to fight discrimination based on gender identity and sexual orientation and to establish protection for transgendered people. It says children should be able to learn without worrying about whether they will be denied access to the restroom or the locker room or school sports. But critics quickly weighed in. The Heritage Foundation's Ryan Anderson writing, the Biden administration will interpret the order to mean men who identify as women must be allowed in women-only spaces, boys who identify as girls must be allowed to compete in the girls' athletic competitions, adding the order spells the end of girls and women's sports as we know them. Turning now overseas, the Trump administration accomplished some historic milestones in the Middle East, with Israel establishing relationships with some Muslim countries under the agreements known as the Abraham Accords. One of the key architects shaping that U.S. foreign policy for nearly four years has been U.S. Ambassador David Friedman. CBN News sat down with the ambassador for his, in, at the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem for his final official interview. Ambassador David Friedman ended his time as ambassador as he began it by praying at the Western Wall. Ambassador David Friedman. Friedman feels work accomplished over the past four years will help the incoming Biden administration get off to a good start. Normally people come into uh, office and the Middle East is all ablaze and that becomes a challenge. Uh, I think that's not the case here. I think we've left the Middle East in a good place. I would urge real caution in, in changing any of the dynamic. It ain't broke, so don't fix it. That includes potentially renewing the Iranian nuclear deal. The Trump administration ended the 2015 agreement known as the JCPOA that had been struck by the Obama administration. Are you concerned about the fact uh, that the Biden administration has already said that they want to renegotiate or re-enter the Iranian nuclear deal? Boy, going back to 2015 would just be an enormous mistake, and it could threaten all the advances that we've made in the region. There really is no rational basis to return to the JCPOA. You know, one of the arguments that kept coming up then in favor of the JCPOA was if we let Iran back into the community of nations, they will self-modulate, they will self-correct. Five years later, we know the truth. We know that they didn't self-correct. The idea that we would make a deal with Iran that would give them a path to a bomb is frankly insanity. Friedman also believes such a move could threaten the Abraham Accords, an achievement that took many by surprise, but not Friedman. The seeds of these relationships have been there for years. They were there under the Obama administration as well. They were there. They needed some water. They needed some fertilizer. They needed some real engagement. But we knew from the beginning that we were onto something. Ambassador Freeman pointed out what set the Trump administration apart. What I think I'm most proud of is that our administration really extended to Israel uh, not just the courtesy, but, but the right to self-determination, to really decipher themselves how to govern. And I hope that courtesy continues to be extended because that's where I think we really made a difference. That set the stage for historic moves. 
such as the United States recognizing Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights, declaring Jerusalem as Israel's capital, and moving the U.S. Embassy there. I think the most significant event of the four years was moving the embassy to Jerusalem. I think so much came from that. You know, I think when we moved the embassy, when we recognized Jerusalem, I think it just opened up enormous possibilities for the U.S.-Israel relationship, and I think it put America really on the right track. Friedman also helped change the U.S. approach to Israel's biblical heartland and the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. What we did was very much in the best interests of the United States, not just the best interests of Israel. And uh, I think the proof is in the fact that after we moved the embassy and after we recognized sovereignty over the Golan Heights and after we did all the other things that we did, not only was there not an explosion of violence, but there was an explosion of peace. We were able to achieve, you know, once in a generation agreements with Bahrain and the Emirates, Sudan, Morocco, Kosovo, all Muslim countries. As Ambassador, so, one Bible um, story inspired Friedman. He kept this painting of the story of the sin of the ten spies who went into the promised land. The one sin I don't want to commit is the sin of the spies, the sin of not having enough faith or confidence or vision in the relationship between Israel and the United States and the importance of keeping that as strong as possible. While the new administration hasn't announced the replacement, many experts on both sides agree Ambassador Friedman will be a tough act to follow. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, the U.S. Embassy, Jerusalem. Major milestones in a relationship we certainly want to grow stronger. Gordon? Well, I, I, hats off to Ambassador David Friedman. I consider him the best ambassador in the history of the relationship between the United States and Israel. Uh, what was accomplished in four years, uh, many people thought was absolutely impossible, uh, but yet he was the architect of it. Um, Mike Pompeo was the architect of it, and President Trump was the architect of it. How many things changed and then changed permanently? They followed the, the advice of the U.S. Congress to move the um, embassy to Israel, to Jerusalem, recognizing Jerusalem as the capital. They stopped the funding of terrorist attacks against Israeli citizens. They stopped the funding of UNRWA, the funding that went to the Palestinian Authority to pay uh, the families of these uh, so-called Shahid, the, the terrorists who carry out the, these terrorist attacks, recognized Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights, and then the Abraham Accords, where uh, on a piecemeal basis, let's make peace with the Arab nations surrounding Israel. Under the previous administration, under the Obama administration, Secretary of State John Kerry, uh, that was considered impossible. That was considered undoable. Uh, but in four years, they achieved the uh, impossible. So congratulations to Ambassador Friedman. Uh, you're going to go down in history. Terry? Well, still ahead, a dog lover dislocates her shoulder after her pet Rottweiler bolts during a walk. So what fixed her arm in an instant? Stay tuned, you'll find out. Plus, the mission to wipe out abortion. The annual March for Life is firing up. How will the pandemic affect it? And how can you take part? That's next. Hi, we hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe to our channel so we can bring you more of the content you like. Monday, the college crunch. We're going to see a calling of university. Students are fleeing higher ed in droves. That as many as 20% will be gone within the decades. And it's not just the virus that's driving them away. That's a revolutionary doctrine. Can America's institutions be saved? Or will campus correctness win the day? There's excitement in tearing things down. Monday on the 700 Club. Stay connected with CBN News all day across our platforms. Well, it's a stunning fact. More lives are lost to abortion each year than all other causes of death combined. Add to that the ruined lives of millions of women who suffer ongoing post-abortion trauma. One week from today, a group of pro-lifers will march in the nation's capital, while most of the March for Life will go virtual, 
Paul Strand has the story. This is the reality of abortions. We're human beings. The annual March for Life puts a bright spotlight on just how globally devastating abortion is. There are more lives lost worldwide to abortion. The estimates range between 42 and 54 million. More lives lost to abortion worldwide each year than all other causes of death combined. Steve Carlin writes about battling abortion in This Is When We Begin to Fight. He appreciates the March for Life. It reminds people of the barbarity of abortion. It fires us up. It inspires us to go out and stand in prayer at a 40 Days for Life vigil, to serve in our pregnancy help centers. People at a prayer vigil had a deep impact on Michelle Shelfer's life. She'd already had one abortion and was headed into a clinic to get another. There was a cluster of people praying outside. Now, they didn't say a word to me. They didn't come close to me. But I know what they were doing. And even if I hadn't known, their prayers were answered because I went in, paid my money and sat down. And at the end of an hour, the doctor still hadn't come to call me in. And I got up and I left. My husband was going through the same change of heart at the same time. And he called me and dragged me out of there. We got our money back. We sat in the car of the, in the, in the parking lot of the abortion clinic. And he proposed to me there. And that's where we started our married life and our family. I really credit those people who were standing outside the clinic. Danielle D'Souza Gill wrote The Choice, The Abortion Divide in America. She says those praying outside clinics or joining the March for Life helped to counter the culture's message. Right now, we don't have the media, we don't have Hollywood, we don't have all these things, these outlets for people to say, oh yeah, you know, I really do think things that so many other people think. They, The left often makes us feel like we're the weirdos. We're the people who are the fringe people. Our views are really not, you know, not the mainstream. I think there's value in seeing those around you who are questioning the morality of abortion. Shelfer, an animator, has drawn and published hundreds of babies' faces she calls foundlings. It's to honor the almost two billion children who have been lost to abortion worldwide in the last, I think it's 60 years or so. She helps lead those feeling guilty about past abortions toward healing in her book, Prepare a Room. And she offers the foundling portraits to those facing up to their post-abortion trauma. Many of them don't even come to grips with it for 10, 20 years after the event occurred. It's, it's a very, very uh, delayed process. Carlin says the anguish is often even worse than for those suffering miscarriages, a pain with which his family is well acquainted. We just had some friends over for dinner who just suffered their fifth miscarriage. It's a tremendous loss. And it was a very difficult experience for, for my wife and me. And as a husband and father, it was very difficult not only to lose two children to miscarriage, but to see the, the physical and the emotional pain that it wrought on my wife. But for those who abort, Shelfer says there's the added crushing weight of guilt. She read from Prepare a Room how the act betrays their very identity of being maternal. We were not just women having abortions. We were mothers having abortions. Abortion turned us mothers into unmothers. It costs. Gill's book, The Choice, references a study of 877,000 women that shows those who had an abortion are 110% more likely to abuse alcohol and 155% more likely to commit suicide. Gill reads from her book how women describe their experiences. I didn't expect the grief. It overwhelmed me. Every woman I've spoken to who had an abortion, regardless of their situation at the time, spoke of grief. It feels like you aren't allowed to grieve if it was your choice to do this. These women are carrying these things around for years, even Christian women, even the women sitting beside you in the pews. Shelfer knew what it was like to feel God couldn't forgive her. I felt that the sin of abortion that I had committed was beyond his reach. Was his, his arm was just too short to reach me. Shelfer has found peace and forgiveness and now helps other post-abortive women reach it. Meanwhile, efforts like the March for Life and 40 Days for Life concentrate on driving down the number of future abortions. We're down now from uh, around 1.8 million a year, perhaps 30 years ago, to uh, under a million a year. Long way to go, but a lot of progress has been made so far. The March for Life, being mostly virtual this year, comes to a computer near you Friday, January 29th. Paul Strand, CBN News, Washington. If you want to know more about this year's March for Life or if you need help recovering from the trauma of an abortion, we have some resources available to you on our website. Just go to CBNNews.com for more information. For everyone listening, uh, wouldn't it be nice to have a culture 
where women wanted to have their babies. Women wanted to be mothers. Uh, isn't that something to strive for? Isn't that something to pray for? Uh, we're having a prayer campaign for our nation's capital, for all the state capitals. Uh, let's add that prayer to it. Wouldn't it be great to have that kind of culture where people wanted children, uh, people wanted to love them, raise them? Isn't that something to aspire to? Uh, isn't that something to believe for? Here's our guiding verse. It's from Jeremiah 29, 7. Seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive and pray to the Lord for it. For in its peace, you will have peace. That's a commandment to all Israel to pray for the peace of Babylon. So if it's a commandment for Babylon, it can be a commandment for Washington, D.C., it can be a commandment for your state capital. It can be a commandment for your city hall. Let us pray for the peace of the city. Let us pray for a culture where women value their children and value life. Well, Jason Sobel of Fusion Global Ministries has joined our call to pray for the nation. Rabbi Sobel will now lead us in prayer. Shalom, CBN family. I am Rabbi Jason Sobel, and I want to pray for America. We thank you, Lord. We just declare 2021 is going to be a time to overcome. We just ask, Lord, that in the midst of the chaos that you would bring order that leads to alignment, that leads to blessing. Lord, we believe that the best days are still ahead for our nation, that our future is going to be better than our past Sim shalom tovah bracha chen vechas rachamim. May God establish his peace, mercy, goodness, and kindness in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Only through prayer can we change our country. Let's pray for peace in the capital and across the nation. Go to CBN.com slash The Republic Still Stands and get your free poster as a reminder to pray. Still ahead, meet a young entrepreneur who got carried away with his own success. I was high stepping into 2020, man. I'm like, this is it. This is my year. What happens when a major deal backfires? It was this really dark time in my life. And he has to move back in with mom and dad. I was, I was done. I was mad. He'll tell you himself coming up. Hi, this is Pat Robertson. We don't know what the future holds for different tech companies, but we always want to be able to share the good news through the media. So I want to invite you to watch our program on CBNFamily.com or download the CBN Family app. This way you can have direct access to the 700 Club and other specials from CBN, and you won't miss a thing. Now just click below to get more details and watch with us. As a young entrepreneur, Will Burke was making money hand over fist and spending it hand over fist as well. Then a major business deal went bad and Will was forced to move back in with his parents. During the lowest time of his life, he found inspiration and encouragement. So what inspired him and how did it lead to an incredible comeback? Take a look. 28-year-old Will Burke is a go-getter. In 2017, he started his own business selling electronics. I've always kind of had this like entrepreneurial itch. I actually got network connections with people who would buy electronics stateside and ship them internationally. As a pastor's kid, Will knew he should be tithing. But the more he earned, the harder it became to tithe. My priorities started slipping a little bit. I started not going to church as much, got a fancy apartment that I probably shouldn't have gotten. I stopped, you know, tithing. I wasn't reading my Bible. Then in late 2018, Will took out a loan to invest in a business deal with his main supplier. The deal went bad, and Will was left thousands of dollars in debt. It was this really dark time in my life. I had to break the lease on my apartment. I had to move back in with my parents. 
that's not what you want to do when you're 27. I was pretty discouraged. Will started doing freelance web design and decided to begin tithing from his small income. I really put my nose to the grindstone. I was consistent with my tithing. I started making money again, and I'm like, this is great. Plus, his former business associate returned his investment. I took it as like a confirmation as like, okay, like I've, I've taken care of you, I've cleaned up after your mess. Will spent the rest of 2019 working to pay off debt and saving to attend grad school. He took his first course online that fall and made plans to relocate to become a full-time student. I was high-stepping into 2020, man. I'm like, this is it. This is my year. Then the night before the move, Will got sick. I contracted COVID. And for the next, like, 10 days, two weeks, I was in constant pain, coughing. While he was recovering, Will's bank account was hacked. Been sleep at night. I'm in constant pain. I can't leave. I'm not talking to God. I was, I was done. I was mad. Will also stopped tithing. But there was one bright spot. During that time, Will's mom started turning on the 700 Club each morning. It was such a little encouragement, and I came to really enjoy it. It was a really healing experience for me. Will decided to start giving again and became a CBN partner. Seeing all of the things that CBN does through Operation Blessing, Orphan's Promise, things that are close to my heart, like sustainable solutions for impoverished communities. What you're giving actually goes to these incredible, incredible causes. I was just like, I've, I've got to be a part of this. Over the next few months, Will's bank recouped 75% of his money. Will continued rebuilding his business while working on his degree online. Since then, he's recovered both physically and financially. My business has exploded. I actually hired my first employee recently. I'm in a better position than I was before I knew what I was doing. And so it's impossible for me to not be grateful. Now Will looks forward to the future. He also encourages others to trust God with their tithes. You're giving that in anticipation that the Lord is going to multiply that in ways that you don't understand. God will do it for you too. You just have to trust in Him. And that's the secret. You trust him and you trust him enough to obey him, to say, I'll live life your way. I won't live it my way. I'll live it your way. Here's God's plea. You find it in the first chapter of Isaiah. If you will only obey me and let me help you, then you will have plenty. What's the key to having plenty? Obeying God and letting him help you. When you do it God's way, then wonderful things can happen. What happened to Will in the lowest part of time of his life, the turnaround, you just saw it. It's because he finally said, Lord, I surrender. I'll obey you. I'll live it your way, and I'll depend upon your help. This year, January 2021, make it your resolve that you'll obey God. You'll let him help you. You'll let him see you through. Now, if you want to start doing that financially with your tithes and offerings, give us a call and say, I'll join the 700 Club. How much is it? It's just $20 a month, 65 cents a day. We also have 700 Club Gold, which is $40 a month. 1,000 Club, $1,000 a year, that's $84 a month. We also have 2,500 Club, which is $2,500 a year. Founder, $5,000 or more a year. And then Chairman Circle, $10,000 or more a year. Uh, at whatever level, whatever level God is speaking to you to give, call now, 1-800-700-7000. Terry? Pay rent or buy food. That's the choice Katrina and Nathan have been forced to make since the pandemic hit. Work for Nathan has been sporadic, and he worried that his wife and his little girls weren't getting enough to eat. But Nathan doesn't have to worry anymore. Now the family has plenty of food. So what made all the difference? Take a look. Katrina loves being a stay-at-home mom, but it hasn't been easy during the COVID pandemic. Nathan's a truck mechanic. He worries about work every day. Biggest struggle is uh, walking into work one day and being told that hey, we're going to have to lay you off for a little bit. Be working one day and the next day you're, you're jobless. We've actually had to choose between like rent and food before because sometimes when rent comes out, it gets very difficult that week and we're very short on money. 
Then they went to a food distribution at Calvary Cumberland Presbyterian Church, which partners with Operation Blessing. With Operation Blessing, us having to just drive down the road and get the food is absolutely a blessing to us. It's been amazing. Food distribution, it uh, helps out quite a bit. I don't have to worry about the wife and the kids not eating. Operation Blessing Partners help this ministry in Mayfield, Kentucky, feed hundreds of families every week. The food distribution, they're really awesome there. They're so sweet and they welcome you as soon as you pull in your car. They will open your trunk for you, put the food in there for you. Everybody gets fed and bills still get paid. It's a godsend. It takes a lot of load off of people who are absolutely struggling in their lives and you don't know how hard it is and how thankful like I am that you do this for us and I just want to thank you so much. The Mayfields are like lots and lots of Americans right now, especially in the midst of this pandemic. And it's not that they're lacking for things that are just extras or fun to have. They're lacking the basics. And we have an opportunity, you and I, to make a difference in their lives. I, I love watching them feel confident as young parents that they can feed their children. Every family should have that. We have the opportunity to make that possible. Listen, if you're a 700 Club member, I want you to know that that food distribution is because of you. If you're not a 700 Club member, what a great time to join right now. You know, we have an opportunity in this next year to truly make a difference in the lives of people. Will you be a part of that? We'd love for you to do that. 65 cents a day, $20 a month, and you join the 700 Club. Some of you are already 700 Club members, and we say thank you. But take a look at the options here because you have an opportunity to go up to the next level. If you're a general 700 Club membership, go up to 700 Club goal. That might not seem like a huge jump, but it makes a huge difference. Or you could go up to the 1,000 Club at $84 a month. Our 2,500 Club members join us at $209 a month, or our founders join us at $417 a month. That works out to $5,000 a year. Immediately when you join, you'll know that you are making a difference in the lives of people who are genuinely in need. And when you join, our way of saying thank you to you or when you increase, we're going to send you Pat's new book. It's called I Have Walked with the Living God. I think this will really bless you. It'll be an encouragement to you as Pat shares candidly some of the challenges that have happened in his life and the ways that God has blessed him because of his obedience, because of his faith. We want you to have this. It's our gift to you. When you join the 700 Club, you'll also receive instant access to the audio version of I Have Walked with the Living God. It's read by actor Kevin Sorbo. So you can listen at home or on the go on your computer, your phone, your smart TV, or your favorite device just by using the CBN Family app. Activate your streaming link when you join as a CBN partner today. And by the way, when you call, will you use Pledge Express? That's electronic monthly giving. It saves us some extra money, and we can put it even more into the lives of families like the Mayfields. And we want to say thank you. If you use Pledge Express, we're going to send you Power for Life teachings. You'll get one every month. So call now, 1-800-700-7000. Gordon? Well, just imagine... Your daughter is going blind in one eye. She needs not one, but two operations to restore her sight. And you have no money to pay for even one of them. Well, that's what a single mother in Honduras was facing. So what did she do? Well, you're about to find out. One thing that eight-year-old Kimberly enjoyed was drawing and coloring. Then she began to notice that her right eye was getting blurry and irritated. I thought there might be something in my eye that was making it hard to see. Kimberly's mom, Carla, noticed that her daughter's right eye was also bloodshot. It seemed like it might be conjunctivitis. I looked, but could not see any dirt in her eye. The next day, she took Kimberly to the doctor. The doctor told me she had a cataract that needed to be removed and that it was a very expensive surgery. Carla's husband abandoned the family seven years ago. As a single mom, Carla wondered how she could raise enough money to pay for an operation. My daughter said, Mom, I want to have the surgery because I want to see. That made me cry because she is my daughter. I ask God with all my heart to heal her. A few weeks after the first diagnosis, Kimberly woke up and discovered that she was now totally blind in her right eye. 
Her mom rushed her back to the eye clinic. The doctor said now she had a cataract and a detached retina. He said she now needed two separate operations to restore her sight. When Carla said she could not afford either surgery, the staff member referred her to Operation Blessing in Honduras. When I heard that, I had faith that my daughter would see again. I know that God heard us and was opening a door for us. Operation Blessing arranged for Kimberly to receive both eye surgeries for free. The first repaired the detached retina, and the second removed the cataract and replaced it with a new lens. A short time after the operations, we were there as the doctor removed the bandage and Kimberly told us that she could see again. Now I can see again. I can play, run, I can do many things. Operation Blessing is the place where they open doors to help people who really need it. I appreciate your help. You have no idea how much I thank you. That thank you goes to you. If you're a member of the 700 Club, there's a wonderful family in Honduras giving thanks to God for you. If you're not a member, I encourage you to join. It's real easy. All you have to do is pick up the phone, 1-800-700-7000, and say, yes, I want to join the 700 Club. If you're already a 700 Club member, I encourage you this year to increase your giving. You can go to 700 Club Gold at $40 a month. 1,000 Club, $1,000 a year, that's $84 a month. Now, when you call, make sure you ask for Pledge Express. That's electronic monthly giving, the bank doing all the work. And there are a variety of ways you can get Pledge Express. One is to call 1-800-700-7000. The other is to go to CBN.com. Uh, on, the, on the giving page, if you give monthly, you automatically sign up for Pledge Express. We have something new called Text to Give, where you text the letters CBN to 71777, and that will link you to a monthly giving page. Now, when you sign up for Pledge Express, we can send as our gift to you Power for Life monthly teaching CDs. So if you like those, make sure you ask for Pledge Express. And when you become um, a member, when you call with your pledge at any level, I want you to have it. It's my father's latest book, I Have Walked with the Living God. Now, in this, we've got this wonderful stories of how God guided him over 60 years. It's been uh, an incredible journey. He, he shows the successes, which he always attributes to God, but he's also very honest with his failures and how God always saw him through. I want you to have it. It will encourage your faith. It will encourage you to listen actively to the voice of God, how to have a devotional life uh, where you're, you're constantly putting your problems, uh, uh, your, your issues before the Lord on a daily basis, and you can get the same results that my father did if you just say amen to God. Well, the book is already getting great reviews. Take a look. Hear what people are saying about Pat Robertson's latest book. It is phenomenal. It's as good as any book I've ever read in my entire life. Discover the principles that guided Pat's life. Get Pat Robertson's latest book when you become a CBN partner. It's like having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Pat. Cannot praise Pat enough for the book. Call now, 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com. From Marine lieutenants in the Korean War to building a global ministry, Pat Robertson reveals how God has directed him every step of the way. In his latest book, I Have Walked with the Living God, Pat Robertson shares his personal journey of faith and how an ordinary life can become extraordinary when surrendered to God. In this highly acclaimed book, you'll learn the keys to receiving daily favor, wisdom, and blessing how to overcome setbacks and lean on God, how you can hear from God in your own life. Plus, enjoy fascinating untold stories from Pat's experiences in business and the political spotlight. Discover how life with God can be exhilarating and full of promise. Get your copy of I Have Walked with the Living God when you become a CBN partner. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com. Coming up, 
a simple dog walk. His name is Seven because he's my seventh Rottweiler. Turns disastrous. He just lunged and I just feel my shoulder being pulled out of its socket. How did this animal lover find relief in an instant? I knew that God was no respecter of person, so I asked him to heal me. And welcome back to the 700 Club for this CBN News Break. Stephen Lungu, a well-known evangelist called the Billy Graham of Africa, has died in Malawi from COVID-19 complications at the age of 78. He was also the retired CEO of African Enterprise. The announcement of Lungu's death appeared on its website, noting he had diabetes for several years and was not able to fight off the virus. The statement also said few people had a greater passion for Christ or shared the gospel more powerfully than Stephen Lungu. CBN's Operation Blessing is helping those facing hunger during the COVID-19 pandemic. People across the country are still out of work, struggling to put food on the table. But Operation Blessing stepped in, partnering with the Goodness Project and Gateway Church based in Fort Worth, Texas, to host a major food distribution for families desperate for it. So multitudes of families went home with food. One person said, it honestly makes me feel spoiled. Goodness Project Director Rochelle Fletcher said, the gifts from Operation Blessing Partners are bringing hope and love to families who felt hopeless and alone. You can find out more about Operation Blessing by visiting ob.org. Gordon and Terry are back with more of today's 700 Club. It's coming up right after this. Do you want to know more about having a relationship with God? Call us at 1-800-700-7000. Monday, the college crunch. We're going to see a calling at university. Students are fleeing higher ed in droves. That as many as 20% will be gone within the, the decades. And it's not just the virus that's driving them away. That's a revolutionary doctrine. Can America's institutions be saved? Or will campus correctness win the day? There's excitement in tearing things down. Monday on the 700 Club. Arlene named her pet Rottweiler Seven from Heaven. One day when she took him on a walk, Seven was no angel. He bolted on the leash and that dislocated Arlene's shoulder. So what happened next? Take a look. My name is Arlene. I love animals. I volunteer with a pet rescue and a low cost spay neuter clinic. And about a year ago, I rescued a Rottweiler from an animal shelter. His name is Seven because he's my seventh Rottweiler, and Seven means completion, and it'll probably be the last one I have. <laughs> when I adopted my dog, he was used to running in the streets and having his own way, and he was never trained to leash train. So it was quite a journey to train him, and he pulled on my arm many, many times. He's a massively strong dog. He was so hard to walk, and then finally he just lunged and I just feel my shoulder being pulled out of its socket, dislocated my shoulder. I'm not a big doctor person. I only go about once a year. So I would have thought I could wait it out and see if it just went back by itself, but it, it didn't. I couldn't lift my arm over my head. Uh, if I tried to turn my face to the right, to look to my right, it was almost impossible. I had to turn my whole body. Uh, it's just, Sometimes when I'd sleep at night, I would move the wrong way and it would wake me up in pain. The Holy Spirit gave it to you through the word of knowledge. You got something out. On April 21st, 2020, I was watching the 700 Club like I try to do every morning and a word of knowledge came in. You've uh, dislocated your shoulder, uh, pulled a muscle, whatever it is. I just touch it right now and it'll go right back in place and the pain will be taken away in Jesus' name. I knew that God was no respecter of person, so I asked him to heal me. And so I turned my head and I had no pain. I could turn, turn my head. I could lift my arm over my head. I was healed. A few times between now and that healing, that pain tried to come back and I had to rebuke that. Every word he says is true. All I have to do is believe. I am beyond thankful. 
It just humbles me so much that God loves me that much and cares. We're so rejoicing with you, Arlene. That's such a great testimony of God immediately, immediately healing. And I know there are many of you who are watching today and you're saying as you watch her story, I want that for me. So we want to take some time to pray for you right now to build your faith with the fact that it's not just for Arlene. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, we want to call together with you. You know, the Bible says where two or more are gathered together, he's there in the midst of them. So this prayer time is significant as we, as we petition God for the needs in all of our lives. I want to share with you the story of Brenda. Uh, for years, she resides within Ontario in Canada. She suffered from chronic pain in her tailbone. She could not ever sit comfortably. <clears throat> Excuse me. While watching this program on December the 4th, 2020, Brenda heard you, Gordon, say, someone, you fractured your tailbone and it's never healed. It's constant pain for you. You can't sit for a long time. You have trouble with travel. God is healing you. God is knitting together that bone. He's taking all the pain away, all that discomfort. Just lift up your hands to him and receive it. So by faith, Brenda received the word of knowledge and she was healed. Hallelujah. Here's Terry. Uh, I'm sorry, here's Kevin. And Terry had a word of knowledge concerning a person who was having trouble with a foot that was flopping and creating balance troubles. I told the Lord, this is Kevin, I told the Lord, that's for me. And then immediately I felt something like electricity swirling around my right ankle and going inside it. It was also moving up the right leg. Of course I knew the Lord was healing me and I haven't had a problem since then. Anyway, a big thank you to the Lord Jesus for healing me. Now. Keep that in mind. He wants to heal you. Uh, you give him thanks. If you have any problem, let your request be made known with thanksgiving. Now, in that story, uh, it, it ended with, you know, I'm just amazed that God uh, did that for me, that, that it, it's incredible that he came down and, and he healed my shoulder. David had the same question. Why are you mindful why are you mindful of us? Have you ever thought what, what's in it for God? You know, have you ever had that thought? What, what's in it? Um, you know, he, he could just sort of sit back and enjoy the universe. Uh, he didn't need to make us and he, he didn't need to go through all the trouble we put him through. He didn't need, need to do any of that. If you've ever had children, you know that children can sometimes be a trouble. And at the same time, you know the great joy that they bring. What's in it for God is his relationship with you. That's why you are made. And that's why he made all of this. He made it so he could come down in the cool of the evening and talk with you. That's what he did with Adam and Eve. That's what he longs for. That's what he wants. Now, that's an amazing thing that the creator of all of this just wants to spend time with you, just wants to talk with you. When you're a parent, you understand it, and you understand how joyful it is when your child says, Daddy, I just want to spend time with you. I just want to hear you. I just want to be around you. That is a, it's, it's like music to your ears. So of course, if your child is hurt, if your child is sick, as a parent, you'll do anything for them. God Almighty was willing to do anything for you. He was willing to forgive. He was willing to heal. He was willing to do all of that. How did he accomplish it? By sending his only begotten son, by sending Jesus and saying, he will take the sin. He will take all the disease for all people for all time. He'll do that. And when you, when you finally get that that's how much he loves you, that while you were still a sinner, Christ died for you, when you finally get that and understand your worth and understand that in God's eyes, you are worth what he paid for you. 
That's an incredible thought. So in that thought, let's come to him and fulfill his desire. He wants to talk with you. He wants to be with you. He wants to be your God and for you to be his child. That's what he wants. So in fulfilling what he wants, let's come to him with thanksgiving. What are we thanking for? We're thanking him for the solution. We're thanking him for Jesus. We're thanking him for the cross. We're thanking him for the stripes that healed our disease, for the blood that washes away all our sin, for all of these things that allow us to come into his presence and enjoy the cool of the evening with our creator. These are incredible thoughts. Have them now because they give you the faith to believe. If you have problems with your shoulder, lay your hand on your shoulder. If you have problems in your body, lay your hand on that area that needs healing. Take the power and authority that's given to you as a believer. These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You can lay hands on yourself. If there are people in, in, in the room with you, just ask them humbly, could you please come and pray for me? Could you please lay hands on me? Let's believe together, and God will do what he's already promised to do. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you. We come to you with thanksgiving uh, for, the, for the wonderful things that you've done for us. That while we were sinners, while we were in rebellion from you, you died for us. You came for us. You called us by name. You number the hairs on our head. You care about every single thing in our lives. You are a loving Heavenly Father. You love us infinitely. Now, Lord, reconcile us to you. We turn to you, the author, the finisher of our faith. We turn to you, our only hope. Lord God Almighty, stretch forth your hand to heal. Touch those right now who are laying hands on that area of the body that needs healing. Touch them and heal their disease now. By the power and the authority given to us as believers in Christ, we lay hands, we speak out loud, be healed now in the name of Jesus. There's someone, your name is Marie, and you're trying to, with your right hand, reach that area of your spine that needs healing, and, and you're frustrated you can't reach it because of the pain. God sees you right now. He's calling you by name, and he's saying to you, I'm healing you. I'm restoring your spine. No more pain, no more curvature, no more, uh, everything's going to be in proper alignment no more pain. Be released and be healed now in Jesus' name. Terry? Yeah, there's someone you have a retinal issue in your eye. I don't know if it's a tear or a detachment, but it is endangering your vision, and you're very concerned about it. It doesn't seem to be doing what it's supposed to do, even with treatment. God is touching that right now. Just put your hand over your eye as he says, receive your sight. You've been made whole. There's someone you have problems in your left shoulder and you're crying out, please say shoulder. You even just stomped your right foot because you're in so much pain. In Jesus' name, be healed. And that shoulder be healed. You're feeling it go through. You're feeling that electricity, that healing go into your shoulder. Move it now and receive your healing. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you've been touched, let us know. Give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. Here's a word, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. These challenging times call for strength and faith. You're going to be just fine, just fine. You need the wisdom to manage new responsibilities. Great job. And Callie, please write a sentence. And the courage and favor to fulfill hey, life's demands. Let's, let's go. Get the insight and power you need to triumph from Pat Robertson's new book, 
I Have Walked with the Living God. Pat shares his miraculous journey that will inspire you and grow your faith. If you can take one thing away from this book, it is this. Get rid of the clutter in your life. Instead, spend your time in the presence of the Lord. Learn how to overcome adversity and live in God's blessing. Get I Have Walked with the Living God today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to become a CBN partner. Call now.